Games takes a gander at Six Nymphs compared to X Nymphs. How you doing, honey bunch? I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. So we thought we would take as our first video here that we're attempting a look and comparison and contrast between the Amigo card game classic from Wolfgang Kramer, Six Nymphs, also known as Slide Five or Category Five or even the Walking Dead card game, and compare it to the Essen 2016 release, Ex Nymphs. Now, Six Nymphs has been around, as I said, since 1994, and it is a game that plays two to ten players, and this is a game I've played more than any other game in my collection, because I play it at school, and I can fit nine students around the table, and we have a crazy, chaotic time with it, playing 10 people, throwing down cards, and trying not to take cards. Um, and what, So what do you think of the game here, Shell? I think it's great. I've never played it. I've had, never had the pleasure of playing it with nine people. <laughs> so we have played these with smaller groups. Yes. Like at, you know, dinner parties and things like that, game nights, and those work out very yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a light game, so it's easy to learn and quick to pick up. Yeah, definitely and, a filler. You yeah. want to have, think about it in that. And it's a game that gets more chaotic as you add players. So with, you know, two, three, four, five players, you actually have a little bit of control, as we'll talk about when we talk about the game itself. Uh, but uh, as you get up to 10 players, you are kind of winging it. They're, you're hoping that the cards that you're playing are not going to get you the rows, because in this game, and in this game, you don't want to collect cards. Definitely in this game. Now in this game, there's a little bit more subtlety. Two to four players here, and it certainly adds a much more strategy, as, well, in comparison to this one, because here you've got a chance to not only take cards that will not initially count against you, mm -hmm. but also you want to be looking at what the other players are playing so that maybe you can focus in on, oh, if I do this, they're going to be affected and I'm not going to be affected by taking the cards. So you've played okay. it a couple of times. Yes, it's kind fun. Of interesting, right? And we look forward to sharing it with you. Okay, so let's take a look at Six Nymphed and then compare it to X Nymphed. Okay. <laughs> so the first thing we'll look at is Six Nymphed, which gives you 104 cards from 1 to 104, there they are, and they're in mostly purples. Though multiples of 10 have, as you can see, three bulls across the top. Multiples of 5 have two bulls off the top, across the top. And if you get the dreaded, and I'm not going to find it very quickly here, but doubles, so oh, so you can see there's the 99 has 5 on it, so that would mean, of course, the 55, which would have 5 plus 2 because it's a multiple of 5 for 7. You don't want to score points in this game, and the number of bullheads on there are the number of points you're going to score. So the way the game works, so you got to shuffle, and 104 cards takes a bit here, but hey, you can do it. All right, and everybody gets 10 cards. So I'm going to pass to Shelly. You know what? We're going to pretend there's a third player here. All right, everybody gets their hand, and then four cards go out here in the middle of the table. Now, what I like to do at this point is to put them in from low to high. Okay, this guy's just going to play random over here. And you're going to, I'm going to move this over a little bit. So you're going to build a line of cards out, and each row can hold five cards. So if you play the card that would be the sixth in the row, then you have to take the whole row and the cards that, uh, and the card that you played becomes the new starting card for the row. So one of the good things, so you can see here my cards, okay, probably put them in some semblance of numerical order so that you can look and see what you got. You might want to do, not do that too obtrusively because people, oh, that's a high card that he's got and he's putting over there on that side of the card. All right, so I'm looking at my cards. So what I always tell my kids when I start the game is that the best choice 
if you're just starting out and you're not sure how to play, is to play a card as close to these numbers as possible. Because what happens is, if you, uh, it, you have to play a card that's higher than, but close to the numbers, and then you're most likely not going to get hit. So uh, for example, I'm going to choose to play this card. And we all put them face down, and here comes his out there. And we turn them over simultaneously. There's not much of a choice here. OK, so Shelly's chosen 39, so it goes there. And you go from lowest to highest. 48 goes here. And 101, even though it's way out of the way, goes down here. And now he's made this row so that it is not very hospitable. Uh, and it, you know, it may be a dead row very quickly. And then we just play again. So we're looking at this going, oh, goodness, what am I going to do here now? Oh, well, maybe it's time to play this one. I'm going to do that. And there. And we turn them over. Okay, Shelly has a 51, which goes there. The 58 goes here. Notice you, only the end card matters. And my 103, I was like, yeah, might as well get rid of that right now, goes right there. Okay, so we got to choose another card. And hmm, maybe I'll choose this one. There we go. And Shelly's looking over at my uh, hand here. Yuck. Okay. <laughs> and we flip them over. And oh, let's see. Oh, the 25 goes here now. 47 here. And whoops, I bumped. And the 60 here. Okay, that row now has five cards. And, and lots of points. And lots of points. Look, five and three and so on. And, uh, so, and that's the way the game goes, OK? I want to point out that that move that I just did was really bad, all right? Uh -oh. Because now I, I, I'm going to have to wait, because since I have this card here, that I, I am going to have to take that row unless somebody plays a different card. Hoping that random guy over there is going to do that. <laughs> I'll pick one. Uh, uh, there we go. Okay, and I, oh, I'm, I'm very nervous here. I'm going to, uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go there. Okay. okay. All right, we flip them over. Oh, the, okay, so now, this is a good thing to show. The low card here, lower than any of the cards that are out there, has to choose to take a row. Now, usually you choose to take the lowest row, but you know you could say, you know what, that tw I could take that. That's worth three. That's worth three as well. And you know what, this is worth three too. So I could you know be nice and start this here so that we can open up this row, or I could be possibly mean, you know. And so, but whatever. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. Either that 30, Shelly's card, is going to go there or is going to go after this 24. So I, this guy is going to say, you know what, I'm going to take this row. OK, okay. places that there. These cards now be, go into his score pile, not into his hand. And that 30 goes actually here. Oh, yes, thank you. Okay. 25, 25. And then I was trying Strip very hard, but you notice my 97? I got to oh, take this no. row. Oh, no. Lots of points. Bad planning, bad planning. We got all those points. That's it. Five, six, seven, eight, <coughs> nine, ten, eleven. It's almost like I've never played this game before. We all have one card left and we gotta play it. Oh, Shelly's got the five, oh, so she's gotta to take, take a, a row. Whole row. She's probably That's a lot of points. This is my best bet. Yeah. Yuck. I did okay, very poorly. Okay, so the five, oh, look who's talking. All right, and the 40 goes here. And I'm a fool because I should have played this 89 before the 86, but mm, I got to take this whole row as well. So that is the game. And then we just count out the cards. So I'm going to have 5 billion points. Notice these are all worth one. Did I beat the guy who played? No, I did not. I got nine. The guy who played randomly beat us. <laughs> so you can see that but it's somewhat it's usually, chaotic. But usually you played two rounds of this. Yeah, at least a couple rounds of this. I, I got more than nine.
All right. All right. So that is six nymphed. So notice the basic idea is you're playing into rows. You there's a certain number of cards that can fit in each row, and then you don't want to score points. And the points that are scored are the ox heads that are on the card. So with X nymphed, we're using the same concepts that we had in six nymphed. As you can see, you got cards, but these are with different colors now. A lot more colors, um, and the blue is what represents the single uh, cow head here. 55 is still a very bad card. Uh, but And you'll notice that we've got three rows instead of four, and they are specifically generated. And the three, four, and five signify if you play the third card or fourth card or fifth card in this row, then you have to take the cards that are in front of it. Now, what happens at that point is that those cards that you take, you look at and you put one in your personal row here, and then the rest, if you have taken more than one, go into your hand. This personal row, whenever you do those cards, you have to put one down here in the personal row, and it must be built from low to high as well. If you take cards and all of them are lower than the last card that's in your personal row, those cards in your personal row go into the X pile, and those are going to score two points. Remember, you don't want to score points in this game. At the end of the game, all the cards in your hand at the end of the game, all the cards in your hand at the end of the game are going to score one point because the game ends when a person goes out. Okay, So you'll notice we're going to get a hand of cards here, but we are only adding cards to our hand if we take cards from the piles. So, and at least one of those is going to be going into the X pile. So there is that slow possible turning, or fast if people are not taking cards. All right. And I should say, the cards that are in your X row at the end of the game, those don't count against you. So as long as you can keep that X row building out nicely, you're all set. Unlike the previous game, you deal eight cards to each player. So here we go. I got to choose a card. Remember, if you play something lower than anything out there, you have to choose which row to take. All right. Wow, this is going to be ugly. This is going to be painful. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to choose this one. Okay, I'm picking that one. And turn it over. All right, so 79 and 81. Everything's copacetic so far. All right, I will choose this one. Yuck. All right, turn it over. So lower than anything out there, so I'm going to choose to take this. I'm very this happy. This goes in my row. I go there, and the 12 comes here. This is not a good number to have first. Not a great number, but it's only <laughs> worth one point, so That's not true. too horrible. That is true. That good was point. my thinking. I good did point. not want to have to take that sucker. Yeah. Okay, okay. gotcha. All right. I got a oh, good card. Oh, look at you. 13, 16. Oh, Next one takes that. Possibly. Mm, let's see. Hmm. And oh, 80. You. <laughs> All right. So my this is the fifth. So I have to take these. Okay. 62 slides in here. 80 goes there. Now. Here's the thing. I've got to look at these and say, okay, which ones do I want to do? Well, of course, they're lower. They're all lower than this guy. So this guy goes into my score pile, which I'm not happy about. But oh, look at that! I'll take that too, and I will put in these hand. into my hand. All right. Now you have more options. I have more possibilities. Okay, and I don't like the possibilities though, because they're ugly. You have a lot of cards compared to me. All right. So 27, no, 27 has to take a row. Why? Because it's lower than any of these three. You were looking at my row. Oh, oh nice try. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Six. I blew right. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, these are bad. Five, two, three, four. Okay. I'll take this one. This is 62, so you could take that because it's the lowest, lowest of, of the ones the... that are out there. So that might be a determinant. No, that that's you're okay. Take that. So the 27 slides in there. So I and my 95 my... now goes here. The lowest was this. I was looking at your row. Yes. <laughs> that was bad. Uh... And. So you notice that we've gained some cards here. Shelly was down to three cards. This card and Shelly's 28 are not going to count against her. The cards in my score pile here are going to be worth two points per bullhead. All right. Shelly's uh, hand, hand cards. cards are going to be worth one point. Even so though Shelley there's two has heads. Two, four, six total from oh, her six. hand. And then, and then four. four. Uh, that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, plus 6, so a total of 20. Woo! And I have 2 plus 4 is 6, plus another 2 is 8, plus 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. So, so you that's won. the game. Okay? So you can see that there's a little bit more strategy here as you're thinking about which of the rows to take that might fit into your personal row and make it so that you don't have uh, a card that scores and you can keep that personal row building even though all the rest of the cards from the row go into your hand and then have to be cards that you're going to play. All right? So that's XNIMT. All right, so that's a little bit on both of these games. Again, Six Nymphed and X Nymphed. Both, I think, are essentials for your collection. Definitely Six Nymphed, given its versatility, because you can play two to ten players. I mean, wouldn't you say so? Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a necessary for all collections. Right. It's a classic. Exactly. Classic. You should have it. You should have Definitely it. have it. Got to have those ox heads. All right, and X Nymphed. More for the gamer, but still another filler. It plays a little bit longer, so you know you can play this one in 10, 15 minutes. This one's more like 15, 20, possibly 25, depending upon the guys in your group. And you know, with, with this one, it's always coming out at my game club that I run for the kids who are coming in for a little bit of extra credit, you know. Um, whereas this one, this I'm only going to pull out on the game club where the kids are coming in because they want to play a little bit more of an expert game and they're not doing it for extra credit. It's an actual club at the school. <laughs> so that's the way those things work. So fun little Amigo card games. Glad yeah. to have them in our collection. Very much so. All right. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we will see you next time. And, of course, on the podcast at www.garrettsgames.com. Take care. Bye.